On this episode of Delivering Marketing Joy, I talk with RJ Thompson about what it was like to create the City of You campaign and what it's like to brand cities. Hey there, and welcome to a brand new edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. I'm your host, Kirby Hossman, and joining me today is a brand new friend. We talked about it. We were acquaintances. We've developed into friends. We've had a chance to speak on several occasions now. He's a creative strategist with Plus Public and really an interesting dude. So, RJ Thompson, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Kirby. It's great to be here. Absolutely. So, and talking with you again. Yeah, yeah. It's been great. So, how we sort of met is I learned about that you had helped create a campaign for the city of Youngstown, which was called the City of You. You kind of built yes. this whole piece around it. So can you just kind of tell how that came to be? What was the inspiration? Tell us a little bit about that campaign. Sure. So um, this is actually very personal, and I love telling this story. So, um, you know, for any aspiring entrepreneurs out there or folks that have already entered the entrepreneurial sort of atmosphere, um, one of the things you may find is that the community and where you live, especially if it's a city, if it's a large metropolitan area, you know, like New York City, you know, it might be really difficult to get some things off the ground, especially your startup. But in smaller communities, especially in the Midwest, you can do a lot very, very quickly. You could get a, a startup up and running in six months, just ridiculously fast. And um, when I started teaching at Youngstown State University, I realized that Youngstown was this place. You know, I could do something in half or a quarter of the time it would take me to even do in Pittsburgh. Right. So I was able to deploy on some really innovative stuff very, very quickly. And I realized that because of this access, this opportunity available to me, I was able to get closer and closer to this you know, this concept that I had of myself. Everyone has their own idealized self-concept. I'm going to be X. I want to do this. I want to be a captain of industry or, or whatever, you know. Um, I realized that in Youngstown, I can make that happen. And building this better version of yourself, build, a, build this better version of you in the city of Youngstown. Uh, that's kind of where it came to be. And so there was that aspect. And then also, um, this was February 2015. Um, my wife was getting uh, a blood draw done for gestational diabetes because she was pregnant at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a lot of new emotions of being a first time father and a lot of, I mean, it was really just deep thinking about what my future is, how I'm going to support my family, all that stuff. And I realized that, um, you know, in Youngstown, I could build the best version of me. And because of that, my family will benefit from me being at my best. Um, and, you know, that's where it came from. Build the best version of you. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and obviously, you built a whole campaign around it for Youngstown. I'm curious. And, and, and again, you and I don't think you and I have talked much about this. I'm curious, did, what, if any, pushback did you get from the city or did people buy in? What was the response when you created this overall campaign? So uh, the city loved it. The buy-in was immediate, not just with the city, but with all of its stakeholders, university representatives, students, residents, business owners. Everyone understood it. The concept was perfectly calibrated to the spirit of the community, which is we're a scrappy underdog community. We fight for our lives and we come out better on the other side, even if like the, the results aren't ideal. You know, so Youngstown is a fighting city. So uh, immediately the, the ideals of the campaign were accepted. The challenge here, though, is the, the feedback, or not even the feedback, but um, the, the challenge that, that we had with regards to any negative pushback mm -hmm. was that I was an outsider. I'm not a Youngstown resident. I live in Pittsburgh. I go and do my thing at the school, and then I leave. Um, I was not a member of the community. And uh, so 
there was that. That's and, you know, uh, racial diversity is a very, very big issue in Youngstown. The population demographics are practically split half black, half white. Hmm. So I'm a white outsider <laughs> coming up with this idea for this city that many people felt like, we should have done this already. Yeah. This idea is so simple. Why didn't we think of it? And um, you know how these things go. Sometimes it's timing. Sometimes the, the, the right people in the right place at the right time. Um, that was the biggest pushback. And fortunately, you know, I proved to the community that I was a part of them. I love my Youngstown people dearly. I went to all the, all the elementary schools, all the high schools. I went to the, the bad neighborhoods. I went to the good neighborhoods. I, I used strangers' bathrooms in their houses. Like <laughs> I had a wild adventure doing this, but I proved to them that my intent was genuine. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, uh, everyone really owned it, you know, leaned into it and owned it uh, philosophically and ideologically. That's super interesting because I, I do find, you know, you know, I'm from a small community and that is one of the things I find that people either, they go one of two ways. It's either they must be brilliant because they're not from here or <laughs> who the hell do they think they are? They're not from here. It's, it's one of the two. <laughs> yeah, it was mostly the latter and then <laughs> over time it became the former. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, third question for you. Um, I know you do this sort of marketing for many organizations. I'm curious um, just 10,000 feet. What's the most rewarding part of doing this kind of work? So um, I can answer this from a few different perspectives. So the, the artist and designer in me, the, the creative professional, um, if I got to be selfish about it, I can say, I made that logo 20 years from now. I can show my children, like I made that. I can tell you every single experience that I had that led to that existing. So, you know, when, when uh, junior designers fresh out of school, they're like, oh my God, I get to make a print piece. That's so awesome. Or it's going to be printed 5,000 times. Like that's a really big deal for them. It's a feather in their cap, right? I get to say, I brand cities. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's it. That is super cool. And like, as soon as I access that, all of the, well, you know, you're not showing your work in galleries or it's not published in books. And I'm just like, I don't care. I'm branding cities. You know, that's the hardest like branding work there is. Um, so I think from that perspective, that's one thing I like about the challenge. But the, the other part of it is through the work that I create with the community, not for, with, I get to learn their stories of success, their stories of struggle. And I, empower them to tell their own stories. Um, you know, there are a lot of people out there that have amazing things to say, but no one's listening or no one's given them a microphone and being able to do that uh, has had a profound transformation on my life. So I like being able to learn from these people that are essentially helping me design their, the identity of the community that they, they are invested in. And that trust is earned. And the nice thing about it is like, once you have it, you know, I might not see someone in Youngstown for 15 years, but when I do see them, they'll be like, it'll just be like, pick up right where we left off. To have those kind of connections with people is remarkable. And in our line of work, we don't necessarily get that. You yeah. know, we do a lot of one-off projects or you may have a one, one client that lasts for five, 10 years, maybe longer. And then they find another job in another state and that's it. You got to start all over. So, you know, being able to have those relationships has been uh, profoundly uh, transformative. That's awesome. That is really cool. And I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to ask or answer my questions. Uh, give everybody a chance to ask me one question. Do you have one for me? If two trains were leaving from two separate destinations, uh, <laughs> one in New York and one in Los Angeles, at what point would they uh, converge? What time? No, uh, I love doing that. And uh, someday I'm going to finish the question yep. and someone's going to be smart enough to answer it. 
Oh, I was going to answer was, it. I, would, I probably would have been wrong, but I was going to answer. <laughs> so, I, so, you know, at the end of all my lectures uh, throughout the semester, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll occasionally drop that. And what it is, it's really an opportunity for my students to BS me. Like, you could be a thousand percent wrong, but if you deliver it in a very confident way, yes. then, you know, life, I'm man. sold, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, um, one question for you. Um, what's one type of uh, professional goal that you've never reached but want to? Hmm. And how are you going to get there? Two questions. Yeah, no, that's a great question. What's professional goal? So, you know, I one of my biggest things is um, each – time. I've, I've written a couple books and that, those have been very rewarding experiences. I've written them for different reasons. And so with each one, I wrote a uh, fan of happy because I essentially wanted to write a personal development book for my daughters. It's like, mm -hmm. if anybody else reads it, great, but that's the point. Um, I feel like this most recent one, Give First, The Give First Economy was sort of my best because I've gotten better at it. If I would say that probably one of the things I would love to have happen is to write a best, you know, a new New York Times bestseller, best selling okay. book. Um, and I think, how am I going to make it happen? That's the tough one because I don't have an idea for a new book yet. Um, but I think for me, it's about exercising my chops in whatever I do, getting a little bit stronger each time. And I think this time I was a lot better at it than I was two times ago. And so I've sold a bunch more of these books. I've self-published these. And that's, mm -hmm. that's done well for me. And then I think during that time, I've built the brand with speaking. And I think the best authors start selling the book they're about to sell. They started two years ago. And I think that's the big thing, the big transition I would need to make is that I would need to come up with my hypothesis and start testing it in a much more uh, determined way for a long <laughs> right. period of time. And so, um, but yeah, I think that's one of the things that though I've published books, I've never been that best-selling author per se, um, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe next. So, you know, that is, that's kind of like your best version. Right. You know? Yeah. And as soon as you get there, then what's the next then thing? Then what's next? Right. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It never ends. Well, hey, Arjun, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. It's really been fun. And uh, I can't wait to hear what your next project is going to be. We'll have to do it again sometime, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Cool. I'll be there. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time. <laughs>